Oh, yeah, no, we're on. Yeah, this tune is not good. Go, jump, jump, jump. That's hard. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Yeah. I lived, I lived. I lived too, I lived too. I'm fine, I'm fine. Okay, I'm fine, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. Careful, hey. we can't hit, yeah. can't hit, can't hit, can't hit. Yeah, we're okay. Yeah. I'm fighting still a little bit. Enter flash, enter flash. Just kill the flash. Enter flash. Enter the flash. Enter the flash. Hit that quick, hit that quick. Just slowly. Like, look at pace. Yeah, we can end too. Guys, yeah, we have a stick. Can someone? In an interview yesterday, I said by the end of the split, uh, Mosu would be better than Berserker. I was wrong. I was wrong. You are any better. Did, did we have to play the game this slow, by the way? Keep hitting Tauri. Yes, yes, yes. Good gun. Nice, guys. I think one minute. Yeah, keep flash. human warding, that's all. Take that, guys. One last Hail Mary into the back line. Gets absolutely nothing as Boogie just pops the stasis as well. Thank God, just doing a number on the back line as he's just burning everyone down on this Udyr. Shopify Rebellion have to deal with Palpunch, but they blow him. Okay. Nice job, guys. Can you slow? I have W, please. No, let's just... Let, 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 look this guy! Okay, kill. Nice, nice job. Let's go, let's go bottom. Let's go bottom, man. Boys, go bottom. We're already bottom, Aaron. Go bottom, man, guys. We can still win. We can still win, guys. We can still win. Welcome to Waiting Room. Kobe is joining us today. Uh, first topic he wants to talk about is who can roll their R's the best. Yeah. I can't. Let me hear it. I can't do it at all. It's part of my. Le oh, I don't speak. You're my multi mother talented. Tongue. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of my. It's You're a man of many talents, right? Oh my god. Weekend rat. A man of mystery. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway, <laughs> this is the final day of the first round robin. True. True. But there's still a lot of things that we saw yesterday, like Insanity Scion. Which I think if we were to continue to play that game, he still wouldn't be dead. Continue to play it after the Nexus exploded? Or just if they decided to do that thing <laughs> where they Some make a hostage days. situation. Oh yeah, you never let the game end. Yeah. The, the ARAM classic. Uh -huh. The second Scion win, I mean, it's so, so ridiculous. Where, where do you guys stand on Insanity's fascination with playing these tanks mid? Because at the beginning of this season, Everybody it was one of the biggest topics on Reddit. We're like, tank items are so OP. Look at this yeah. Panic Rooker. Yeah. It's so OP. Yeah. Mid lane tanks are going to be OP this yeah. season. And Insanity is the only one that was like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. Yes. And, 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 and Panic Rooker is OP. It is. And I think for me, a lot of it is because, like, Wait, the, so where do you stand? They're good? I think it's good. I think it's good. And a lot of, like, <laughs> and also they were they were willing to flex the uh, Talia, like actually have more damage in your jungler. Yeah. A lot of the times, like, yeah. at least in, um, in our league, people have been favoring more Rel and like just not, just holding on to, actually there are some games where you're holding on 4-5 for jungle pick these days, but for the most part, you're just, you're early picking it. I mean, I think it's good yes. with a damaging jungler. Yes. Because yeah. Garen, would kind of, I know he doesn't build the same items, but it's I feel like the same type of comp. Mm -hmm. And they played that with Maokai and Cassante, and it was garbage. <laughs> um, but then also, I wouldn't say that was the Garen's fault. I they bottom lane was bottom lane diff. Yeah, sure, but I think it's part of it. Yeah. And then I guess the second part of it would be uh, they're committing to these. If they commit to the comps late, it's good because I think if they're up against like a, I know no one plays Victor mid, but like a really heavy damage scaling mid laner and then a hyper carrier like a Felios, then I think you're probably still gonna win with more damage. But as long as people are playing like Lethality Varus and Senna Bot and stuff, then mid lane tanks are broken. I think it heavily depends on the matchup because here, obviously it was gonna make the Nico's life really miserable. She can't really do much in that lane, but yeah. I actually think uh, in talking about the other Scion game that they won, a lot of that didn't necessarily came come from the Scion, but the Scion was allowed to scale to a point where he was a problem. Yeah. Because I actually did like the vein pick into it. Yeah. Like I actually really mm -hmm. liked that part of C9's draft. I know it's been a contentious point of discussion mm -hmm. in talking <laughs> about, and I know we're going to talk about C9's drafts later, but I actually did really like that. So I think it's very compositionally dependent. And I also think one cool thing that Shopify can do with their drafts 
And it seems like we, the lounge ends up doing a lot of Shopify drafts just generally. Yeah. We're always guessing where are these champions going to go. Yeah. Right? So that's one thing that I really like from their draft yesterday. As Raz pointed out, the Talia flex was really good because if they hadn't picked it, I actually thought that Palafox probably would have played it on the other side too. And I'm just saying specifically, it seems like more of a response to Kalista. They've been giving Kalista and playing mm. uh, like beefy, strong lockdown picks into it. And so like, Teams have to now recognize if we're going Callista, we need to have another like higher points of damage because they will run this. Yeah, I think it's gonna get worse because every team, when you see Shopify as your opponent, is gonna be prepping for multiple tanks and tank mids. So you lose the surprise factor. Yeah, and everybody. So gonna... it's gonna get worse, as in they're gonna lose more. Yeah. Not that we're gonna. Spoiler see more though, tanks. I predict them to win in the upset. You're all. Why you gotta spoil it? You gotta spoil it. Wow, you're place. spoiling your own uh, predictions. Another thing about Dignitas yesterday. Yes. They had a big lead against Team Liquid, mm -hmm. and then they lost. Uh -huh, so what do you call that, uh -huh. Matt? it's either a comeback or a throw. Or a Dignitas. <laughs> so which one is it? It's for sure a Dignitas. Yeah. They threw that. I mean, two things. The first one was like they were pounding bot lane, constantly looking for dives. The second one, <laughs> the second dive did not work, by the way. The second dive turned up against them. They still had a lead. And then in their mid game, I felt like they were really putting, allocating pressure on the map poorly. Mm -hmm. they had, like one time they had a Callista through mid lane while they had like three or four members top lane. There was no objectives top side of the map. And then they got oh, ran, no. their Callista ran down. Choke. Yes. Oh. So and that's a third challenger has entered. Well, he's saying himself, I'm saying it, it's the team. Is a choke not the same as a throw? Yes. No, it's different. Oh. It's literally the same. They took that shit yeah. and so threw it. A throw <laughs> is a specific fun. moment. Oh. Right? That's like, choke is also one really bad choking decision. Is... To me, a choke is like what happened in that game. A where they just decision. didn't do anything. Like, they got a lead, and then they just got completely outside lane by two. And then something back. happened with their lead. They yeah. may have thrown it their lead. They slowly... they slowly gave it away. Yeah. I agree with the lane assignments thing. Uh, Kobe and I were on that game, and one thing we kept bringing up was, like, when it worked, when they were actually well-coordinated. Because if you're running, like, a Nocturne Oriana comp, right? Mm. A lot of that is heavily dependent on timing and execution. So when it worked, it looked great. When it didn't work, XE was going in and dying, yes. and then the rest of the team is not able to follow up. Like in that fight, we even pointed this out on cast, like here's Ori, she can't get in to even get the ball delivery system working. So it's heavily dependent on like their coordination around when they're choosing to go in and making sure that their damage dealers, especially Ori, who is a massive part of the Nocturne Oriana combo, is there mm -hmm. to execute it. Yeah, and so execution, I think, is a big one on dives. Like, I think in their first dive worked out really well, second dive did not. But like overall, there's a lot of t good takeaways that they had. A team that was very similar to them, I felt like, was NRG. Mm. Um, so actually, ended up having a clip for a minute, just wanted to break down NRG specific one because I felt like, look, Shopify Rebellion have been getting a lot of failed dives and being the beneficiary of it. This is one <laughs> where, as you can see, NRG are setting up for a dive here. Now, the jungler is not looking for it. Contracts actually ended up clearing, as I can see here, Raptors and then path up top. I think generally, if you're drafting Ash Callista, you can just do a repeatable play where yes, they're bot lane, they're still going to be uh, level one for this play. A lot of times you look for that bot lane dive. So my first question is going to be like, I, why are we pathing towards top side instead of look pathing towards this play? Now, second thing is, can NRG go for a 2v2 dive? Yes, I think they can. First things first, yes, level one on both uh, B-Boy and Zazel. Clearest thing that I could take away from this one as Callista, and FBI does a good job in ranking up his W uh, second, so then he can get the additional damage from Huhi. I think, in the nicest way possible, Huhi should die for this play. Be the sad thing about all of this In game. Is <laughs> <laughs> Huhi should die from this play, because I think if you both commit to the play, AD Carry dies here, he gets completely locked out, he loses this entire wave, has to come back, completely cooked on this one. But because Huhi doesn't commit to it, backs away, dies, Level two, by the way, for the Varus. So he actually survives because he gets level two off of Ash's death. 
and then it spirals. No summoners for Ash, so they end up going for another 2v2 play and Ash ends up dying later on because he doesn't have sums. So this game basically snowballs off of a failed dive where I think it can easily be solved by A, your Nocturne being a part of the play, very easy to replicate, yeah. and then B, when you actually say you can go for a 2v2 dive, then you just end up committing completely to it. Um, uh, in this case, it would be Huhi. Is that a throw? That was a throw. Was it a choke? It was a choke. Interesting. It was a choke. What's the difference? There know. is no difference. A choke <laughs> is a throw. Then it, why are they different words if there's no difference? <laughs> you just you have it. You admit it. We win. <laughs> no, I do not. There are you different can, words. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you can choke on plays and still win a game. So and the, you, the choke sure. is you're eating a delicious meal. Yeah. Like you, you have the game in yeah. a winnable spot. You should okay. win this game. Uh, then you choke it. <laughs> okay. that's, a, that's a moment. The throw is you've got the ball. You have full control of the game. You throw it, oh no, now you don't have to ball anymore. It's the exact same thing. True. Big They're moment, totally different. you have possession, you lose control of the game, it's the same thing. Same thing to me. Ah. <laughs> That's actually a great question for Twitch chat out there. If you guys yeah, are out there true. wondering. Do you agree with Kobe or Jack? They're different words. They have to be different things. <laughs> you can't have two words that mean exactly the same thing. Otherwise, you there'd be one word. You definitely can. They're called you, we, There are some things you got multiple words that mean the same thing. Similar things. Even, same thing, even, no. <laughs> even flammable and inflammable. Different words. They mean the same thing. Okay, they sound like a, they're opposite. Yeah. That's a really good example. True. Moving on. It's an example, not a winning <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about Cloud9 now. Uh, okay. Because they've lost three games in a row, and we want to figure out why. Is it because they are the antithesis of a stacked deck, or is there something <laughs> wrong <laughs> with their draft? Oh my god. Um, so as the vain mid defender, uh, I'll, I'll step in here a little bit. I think some of these losses aren't necessarily due to draft, but execution. However, I will say some of these drafts that they're going for, like, again, Illusion, Milio, uh, Callista, Renata, We've talked a lot, not just about C9, but generally, actually more more about TL yeah. specifically, in terms of like when you have this kind of bot lane, how do you want to play on the map, right? Like Raz just literally pointed out an example of what you kind of want to do with a Callista, right? Where you really want to be able to snowball off of push, off of dive, and execution is, mm -hmm. as Raz also pointed out, very important, uh, not only just from a bot 2v2, but also what your jungler is doing, how how well or whether they're actually pathing towards your lanes. So I would blame it more on execution and less on draft. Yeah. But when you are drafting these things, you do need to have a very clear idea, especially early. And then if you snowball it, what you want to do in the mid game with it. And I feel like we haven't always seen that from them. My, my read uh, from looking at those drafts, uh, the oversimplification is a blabber enjoyer. Yeah. Is uh, he played Maokai Rel Rel, and then they just lost all the games. Oh, before wow. that. So you got the blabber brand of Cope. Before that, <laughs> yes. he was playing Nocturne, and in his first two games, I think it was like Xin Zhao in his uh, very first game, and yeah. carry junglers who can just get in there and actually kill people. But they're basically what I'm saying is they're not coordinated. Like, they have really good lanes, so they can win naturally, Except when they try and come together, if Blabber's not the one who's able to like actually do damage, mm -hmm. I feel like they're actually they're just they're struggling. So if I'm gonna just make a prediction, an okay. oversimplified prediction, okay. if Blabber on carry champion, Cloud9 win. Wow. If Blabber on tank champion, Cloud9 yeah. lose. I think the only <laughs> That's one. six for six. So you're so on far. the draft side. Uh, yeah. I'm yes. on the no draft side. I, I, so obviously there's problems yes. without like those aren't bad drafts. Yes. But right now they are bad drafts for them. Oh my God, I see what you mean. But I will say for me- Wait, isn't that the, kind of the same thing I was saying? Yes, yes. But, <laughs> but I would say regardless of the drafts, the ways they've been blundering these games are insane. Yep. The bot lane dive that, that when they went up against Shopify Rebellion on a really good draft, we all agree. Like that one is, an, you cannot get that game back with how well yep. Shopify Rebellion were playing it. Mm. Um, and then uh, I, the, the Tristana one, that one is a difficult draft as well, just because I think for Tristana, team fighting into Orianna, or at least the competition that they were going into, I think it's always hard. If you if you don't play off sides, they should just generally play off sides. Um, oh, and oh my God, the most recent game was just like a bot 2v2 kingdom. So like, yep. I, like if, yep. you're, if your individuals are just playing poorly, regardless of your composition, you're not going to win. I've sure. got a stat for you. Hit okay. me. 
And Cloud9, you wouldn't expect them to be near the bottom of any stats. No. True. Well, if they've lost three games in a row. <laughs> I mean, 50-50 record still. Yeah. But it's the early the game, stat? actually. It is kills, uh, kill death ratio. Yeah. Up to 14 minutes. Mm -hmm. They are seventh in the entire league. Hmm. We just saw yesterday their bottom lane. Two v seventh, and that's of eight. Yeah. That's really low. <laughs> exactly. I, I would have said seven. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a ten. It's just slow. Bring it in context. <laughs> Their, their bottom lane yesterday, just getting 2v2 killed yep. multiple yep. times by Masu and Busio yeah. back to back. A lot of these early deaths really costing this team because that's not something that you, we would say about Cloud9 in recent history no. you know, for, for years. Early mm -hmm. game was very strong for them. Although, uh, the very start of last year when they had Diplex, that was kind of true. Okay, maybe you would say that. So, though. exactly a year ago. <laughs> Anyways, 3-3, three, three, not predictable. Not predictable. Yeah. No. None. What has been predictable though. Producers have tried to just, the bar for what is predictable is as predictable as a sunrise. Mm. What do we think is just not surprising? We need to ground ourselves okay, let in bye this bye. LCS season. <laughs> what is extremely normal? Emily? Uh... The I'm queen gonna of go, lukewarm I'm takes. gonna go, yeah, I was like, this sounds like lukewarm takes, which it's is something that expected I do so with far. Kelsey. We, yes. Maybe we should bring it to the broadcast. Um, yeah. I'm going to say TL at three and three. I felt like they were going to be, I think I put them oh. fourth okay. in, my, in my preseason yeah. power rankings. Right in the middle. You could, I, and I actually TL would argue fourth, this. That's the first. most expected thing? I think it's pretty expected in terms of where this team was going to sit. I know, like, my expectations for them are that they'll land a little higher. But, I mean, fourth is, like, exactly middle of the pack, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and... And I believe that's where I put them. Yeah. Um, I think you could say maybe the execution in the games isn't what we would expect, or it's not. It hasn't been thus far like what I would have expected in terms of what they've been focusing on. Mm -hmm. But in terms of ha like TL having a three and three record, being solidly in the middle of the LCS. Yeah. I feel like that's pretty predictable. Kobe, you're the guest. You get to go next, but you don't get any time to explain yourself because we have to get to Sorry. Okay. Oh, My most expected it. thing is that everyone loves fans being back on the weekends. Uh, the stadium is full. And there's <laughs> audience yeah. noise again. I want to flame you for that take, but... You told me there's no time to explain. That I, takes I know. As no game one draws near, good job, Kobe. Energy has a message <laughs> about why you should be rooting for them in 2024. Take a look. Hey guys, Andy Miller here, Energy Esports. Well, maybe your favorite team left LCS. Bye-bye. Or maybe you're just tired of losing in groups. Either way, I ask you, why not Energy? Why not us? Are all orgs run by random ball dudes? The truth is, yes. Who the f are you? Honestly, I don't even know anymore. With us, you get an org dedicated to team building one of the many cornerstones of energy. And our state-of-the-art training facilities. I think this is broken. Yeah, I don't think so. And for the TSM fans, look, same number of letters. So why not energy? Good, good, did we get it? Hi there, it is me, we can harass. On the weekdays, I am but one guy. Those were shot on Thursday. Now that the LCS is back on weekends, I like to let my hair down and have a nice glass of Cabernet Sauvignon and watch some live patch League of Legends. Come and join me, won't you? Hello? S'il vous plaît, garçon? Can I have more wine, please? Oh, relax.
Welcome back. Let's take a look at the standings, can't we? Of course. Bye bye. <laughs> Come here, please. See if you play. Not on my face, though I would love to look at my face. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Same. Same. <laughs> Fly quest in first place. Shopify and Immortals and Dig tied, uh, tied for sixth. Bunch of teams there in third. Energy second place. A big just cropping of teams right in the middle. What do we think as we pull up the schedule is the most important game of the day for any of these teams? Because we just saw the compression in the standings. Emily? TLC9. Yeah. I think yeah. that's super important, oh, yeah. obviously, right? Like C9 are now on kind of like officially on a lost streak, right? Um, and TL had a very kind of grubby win against uh, <laughs> grubby, <laughs> grubby <laughs> win. yesterday. So yeah, this is really important for both of these teams. Yeah. Also though, FlyQuest with the win could just solidify the first half in first place. Not many sure. people expected that. Kobe, I see something in your face. You got to say it real I quick. I mean, I'm loving the, the Team Liquid Cloud9 because there's so much drama behind it now. JoJo and APA are fighting constantly they on are. Twitter. They're sure. uh, making fun of each other. Go check out both their Twitters. APA is the most, he's such a good trash talker. Yeah, like, he, he's a good he's villain. So annoying. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't explain it. I like it. Dig and Fly are meeting in game one to see who is better, but there is a more important question Who is smarter? This pro taught himself English through talking to an AI. Oh my god. <laughs> it's uh, Immortal Toplaner Castle. Yes. How do you know that? These guys are nerds. Nice. Thank you, thank you. Yes! <laughs> we knew it! Nice two. This recent addition to the LCS is named after a soap brand. How can you ask questions of their team? List as many items that build from this specific item. No, your, team your teammates are dying. <laughs> I am going to give you eight players, put them in order from youngest to oldest. Rig! Yes. Yeah, and it was, uh, I will say, they both got really, really into it. Uh, which is, if you have pro players who are competitive people already, getting them to do anything competitive, <laughs> literally anything, they will get mad. It's a fun time. I love the question sneak peek where it's like the player that's named after the soap brand. I'm like, okay, which one of you guys are hygienic? <laughs> which one of them? No. Wow. <laughs> you could have said chocolate brand. I feel like that brand in general, I'm always like, you guys have to have some sense of separation, chocolate and soap. Just throwing that out there. Any dub enjoyers. <laughs> I like why would you always just say, just throwing that out there. Whatever something there. is completely off topic to what we're trying to get to. I'm just saying, are you eating soap? <laughs> I uh, hope not. Somewhat important questions, but more topical questions were asked to Nuke Duck as Emily caught up with Fly's head coach earlier today. Hello, I am here with FlyQuest, Coach Nuke Duck, prior to their first game today to answer some draft questions or not answer some draft questions. Um, where I want to start is just, this is obviously the second week on the new patch and kind of playing on live patch. Has your adaptation changed or like has your coaching style kind of changed in terms of preparation or like how you go into this week versus the first week of being on live? Yeah, so uh, the first week, obviously the first week that we're going to play on the patch, it's not out in solo queue yet. So we have to like really like focus on like making sure we know like what's good and what's, yeah, what we want to use for the weekend. So it, it has changed. Like you, you need to just focus way more on, on figuring out the meta and like what the players want to use. And uh, as opposed to like uh, gameplay, like that has to, so especially in that first week when we're playing and then in the second week, you have like data from the whole LCS. So that would be like the week that was now. So now we can focus more on like, okay, did, was there something we missed that other teams used? And then if not, then we can just proceed as normal with like uh, gameplay and whatnot. 
One thing that I know a lot of teams did was look at Eastern regions specifically, um, solo queue and also what they were playing in LCK and LPL previously. Um, I have noticed certain shifts towards what we've seen from them in their leagues, even with them being a patch behind. So one thing I wanted to ask is, do you think LCS teams generally are looking at um, those leagues still in terms of what to play, or is it more focused on the patch specific because we are the first on live patch? Um, it's it's a bit of both. You have to be like, um, yeah, you have to like see how it would work. Like you have to put it into context, like, you can for sure see like lane matchups in the east because they are like very good at the lane and like laning phase is very similar so if they do something uh good you can probably like replicate it and you can play that matchup for example um but you have to be but you have to be careful like just blindly copying them uh, you have to understand you know why you're doing it and so it's like good for inspiration but you also have to understand that they are a patch behind them uh yeah you you have to just assess it yeah and then lastly, if if you can answer this question, uh, one of the things I've really appreciated about FlyQuest drafts overall is the flexibility that you can give certain players in your draft. So like Inspired uh, being able to be flexible around his picks, Bwipo obviously uh, being very flexible, and also Busio who's been having a great week thus far and picking certain things like the Nico support, which has really allowed him to shine. What do you think is like the ideal draft for this FlyQuest team? ideal draft uh i mean you just have so you you have to like cater to your players right so if you have players that can actually like pilot many champions and like you have to of course assess as a coach like like most players think they can play everything right so you have to see like okay is that really the case and how does they impact the team uh so but if they truly can play a lot of champions then using that's just like an advantage you have as a coach so then you can flex pick or like do counter picks later on uh, so yeah i mean what's the optimal draft i i think i have uh, some idea about like what role each guy should play for have like the optimal draft for us at the moment but we don't just want to do that because we also want to be a flexible team in playoffs so uh yeah flexible players that makes it for you can make better drafts and uh, we're like trying to try different things so we're ready for playoffs well it's worked so far all the best in your match taking on Dignitas today, and we'll toss it back to the lounge. Thanks for that, Emily. Here are the predictions for today. Okay. Everybody thinks Nuke Duck is gonna have the right read on the patch. True. Or yep. that his team is better. <laughs> One or the C9 other. C9 also oh, has no. the faith, even though everyone's 3-3, and then we finally have some disagreement in Hunter Thieves versus Shopfire Billion. Yeah, I think, uh... The TLC9 is interesting, so I was wondering if anyone of us would flip. I do think the hardest to call is the Shopify 100. That's one where I wish we could see draft for. Yeah, 100 Thieves are an interesting one. They will basically have a really good draft to round out really strong comfort picks for both uh, Quid and honestly also Sniper. And Sniper, I think, has been playing a lot better. I think their team fights, although at times scrappy, is it's working well for their strong mecha uh, mechanical players. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why I would favor 100 Thieves, but I do uh, agree completely. It's very draft dependent, um, and these teams are really close. Also, fun fact. Hit me. There is a ton of rain in the forecast today. Oh, my True. God. Good thing we are indoors, but shout out to the fans that are here braving the elements to make it to the studio. Good luck getting home, everybody. Hell yeah. But stay here the whole time because the rain's only going to pick up. Anyways, that's it here from the lounge. Casters, take us into game one. Welcome back to week three of the LCS. We're kicking off the last day of our Super Week in style with FlyQuest trying to solidify their spot at the top of the standings versus Dignitas. Then, APA and Jojo Pion face off in a mid lane matchup as Liquid attempt to make it four losses in a row for the Cloud9 Super Team. Next up, Shopify Rebellion are looking to keep the momentum going after taking down top dogs Cloud9 and Energy. And finally, to wrap up the Super Week, Energy try to bounce back against a surging Immortal squad that's been surprising everyone so far this split. All right, I am so excited for this one. FlyQuest have been on a tear. Top of the standings, number one team here. Uh, honestly, they're your toss. Let's, let's see what you can pull out here. Maybe something with Rich. I've been hoping that Rich would start to pick some more interesting counter picks. Whippo might be the person to push him to it. Might be him. I'm Azale here, gonna be casting today with Kobe. 
as we are kicking off the final day of Super Week, the last day of our first round robin here in 2024 spring. And it feels like we are just ripping through it. It's been going by so fast. It's crazy to think we're almost halfway done this split. It certainly is. Time flies when you're having fun. Aww. <laughs> Always having fun with you, Kobe. Uh, it should be an interesting one. You know, I agree. Obviously, FlyQuest coming into this heavy favorites. You know, everyone's going to be predicting them. They are alone at the top of the table right now. But we have seen so many teams pull off upsets. We are really seeing that no one can be overlooked. There are no free wins in the league right now. Every team is a threat. Yeah, that, is, that has been mirrored in people talking about scrims, too. Everyone feels confident uh, coming in. So really, a lot has changed during draft as well. Uh, you know, a lot of these teams, even post game, have really been referencing, ah, man, if we were to set up with a few more options with how to play out the game, uh, then, then they feel like they would have a much easier pathway. So far, though, we're remaining consistent in that mm -hmm. Karma remains permaband, and very good Orianna ban versus Jensen is most played and 74% win rate is crazy for a champion that he's played 97 games of. Yeah, that is absolutely insane. But you touched on it earlier. What will our top laners cook? We're going to have a poll in chat to vote now in chat. Will it be something delicious, something bland, or <laughs> Renekton or an absolute garbage? Duke. <laughs> <laughs> I would say for this matchup, What's your vote? The, the Renekton orange should be very, very low. That I feel like Renekton, we're safe. Exactly. Rich, Rich and Whippo, there's no way we get that match. Good reminder. Up. Thank you, fam. Appreciate that. <laughs> yep. So I think it's going to be something delicious. That's my vote. All right. Well, we'll have to find out. We've been seeing some, some cool flexes. Uh, people are really using a lot of different picks up there in the top lane. Uh, you know, Whippo, obviously, one of the most creative top laners. Rich has been more meta this split, but last split, obviously, developed that that reputation for being able to bring out things like the Quinn, like the Alawi in particular. So people have been kind of waiting to see, you know, when is that going to crop up this split? And even this split, while he has not played anything off meta, he has played a different champion every single game. So eventually he has to play off meta. <laughs> exactly. He's getting through them all. Yeah. I like it. I like uh, it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We're following here. The, the Chishana getting locked in, though. Uh, definitely could be a flex pick. Masu has a very good Tristana. Uh, Jensen, obviously, very much could play that in mid lane because they've got a Maokai. Every time you see a jungle Maokai, you think, well, we need to pair that with Tristana or Jace for mid lane. So. FlyQuest probably setting up their jungle mid here and Dignitas turn to answer. Do you want to answer jungle or do you want to answer mid pick already for Dove? It is going to be an interesting one, right? Because, you know, traditionally this is a pretty common mid lane pick. Jensen has not played a lot of these AD style mids though in his career. He did though with Dignitas last year start to play some just on it. He had five games on it. So he was obviously working at trying to pick up this sort of style. He has been very heavily towards mages throughout his career. You know, touched on the Orianna, but that is his bread and butter. That is how he's won championships. That's how he stayed at the top of the table. So it really could be going to Masu. And even on the Maokai point, while Maokai ha is predominantly played in jungle, it is a very good support right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw heard Ole referencing win rates and Maokai at the very top of the win rates for supports as well. So could be some extra flexibility there. Whippo definitely has had some very good and some very bad Gragas games. So hopefully he has dialed in this time around. Having a Maokai on your team to help set up some of these times makes it a bit easier. You have a lot of AOE control of the battlefield. And we'll work through the rest of these picks and bands. Jensen and XU raised the stakes for today's match on Pros last week. The careers are not that good anymore. Like, kind of like the NA and EU players, like they're like individually on par, right? So I don't <laughs> think it's worth importing the Koreans as much Whoa. as is already happening. Because it's like... I, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah like, even I think energy... When gaps, Jensen. Okay, okay, okay. We'll come back to this. Okay, okay. Go to Monday. This is what happened. When we banned Porky is here. Yeah. Someone, yeah. someone clip this, and then when he gets solo kill, just <laughs> have this playing. <laughs> All right, we've it's got it ready. Clipped. It's been good. Yeah, we've got it ready for the solo kill. Either way, Jensen mm -hmm. kills Dove, Dove kills Jensen. Uh, Rich comes down, kills Jensen, and they're all fair game here. But a little bit of context to that because <laughs> oh. <laughs> previous to that conversation where the clip started, you know, they were talking about uh, the level also of the imports that, yeah. that have been recently. It's not like you're not importing Faker, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Into the LCS. Exactly. And so that, that was kind of the, the point that Jensen was riding on. He felt like this class 
of uh, Korean imports was much easier to deal with and maybe not worth it in his eyes. Exactly, and that's that's what a lot of the conversations were coming into this split. You know, players like Dove, um, like Mask, like Castle, people are saying, you know, are these players really better than their NA, you know, counterparts who are already here? You know, the debate on should you be taking, you know, homegrown talent or looking elsewhere? Well, that remains to be seen. We'll see if Jensen can prove that he is better than Dove here today against Dignitas. Yeah. There have been some plays where Castle's messed up in the LCS, but I lost the game to him last night, so I can't I can't say uh, anything okay. anymore. He's I think got, it's a good import. Yeah, I think it's a good import. <laughs> he has to be really good to be LB too, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so. All right, I think he's LB. Must uh, be worth the slot. <laughs> uh, uh, messing around with Masu's possible AD carries here, and they do go with the Avelios. Nice range early on, of course, with the green gun uh, to start it out, and they're going to keep that jungle slash support role kind of up in the air a little bit. Although, I, again, I still assume it's going to mm -hmm. be a jungle Maokai. And it does mean Tristana should be going mid for Jensen there, you know, with the Aphelios getting locked in. The poll, the results are coming in. Delicious is running away with it. So we'll see if we get something <laughs> delicious oh, yeah. up in that top lane as we're waiting for those final picks. Yeah, what, um, what will complement the Gragas? Because that is the most likely scenario yeah. is that it is Whippo Gragas. Gragas is the base, you know, yeah. it's like the rice. We need something spicy over on the other side. Otherwise you're just eating plain, plain rice. Uh -huh. <laughs> Nobody I mean, wants to do that. Yeah, we don't, at least fry it up or something. Yeah. What we got? Oh, oh no, oh that's no. That's rice and then some more rice. That's Yeah, we got rice and then like bread. With maybe. a side of bread. <laughs> <laughs> Not the most exciting. A lot meal. of carbs in this top yeah, lane we yeah, got going here. Yeah. Uh, at least it is. Maybe the builds could spice it up a little bit, you know? Honestly, it's going to be Lethality Aatrox with uh, for the can state we pull of pro AP Gragas. <laughs> Come on. I, yeah, yeah, maybe. That could make it more spicy. I don't yeah. think he's going to do it, but it would. I, I, I do like it. I do like it. Uh, we do get a bard, so there's a, there's a little bit of possible action. Mm -hmm. Maybe the bard goes up to the top lane. Okay. And it's about how you... He could... gets adopted by the top laners. Exactly. It's a 2v1 lane. Okay, okay. Everybody goes up there for the grub fight. You know, they mix it around. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. got some more ingredients. Okay. okay, respect. I like it. It'll be fun to see how Busio can pilot this. A lot of hype has been building around this Masu, Busio bot lane. Double oh. most valuable prospect bot lane coming up from the NACL. Did amazing yesterday. Yeah, I was gonna say, especially after yesterday, the confidence has to be sky high for them. Uh, it has been so far in Super Week, two games of Varus for Masu. So this is now not gonna be the the comfort of the Varus coming through. But Aphelios again is one of the champions that he's put in a lot of time on. So we'll see up against the farming Tom Kench here, most probably. And I know that Athelios is his most played all time. You know, people in the NACL talk about this as his signature champion from the NACL. So it should be absolute comfort. It's going to be a fun one. Really interested to see how Busio performs on the Bard. We've seen some really good Bard games this weekend, some not so good ones. Ole was smurfing on it. Core JJ had, I think, what was much more of a rough game on the Bard. So I want to see how he can coordinate with the team, how he can set up those plays. All right, chat. Do you think Busio will be a Core JJ Bard or an Ole Bard? <laughs> And it's interesting how those two names have different connotations now. Ole was, was smurfing on the Bard. That's a good Bard. That's a rank one solo queue Bard. My man was talking about how in the interview, he's looking a lot at, at these solo queue win rates. He's looking at what are the OP champions in solo queue, especially with us on live patch. You got to be doing that. But we are into the first game of the day here for the final day of Super Week. Dignitas and FlyQuest looking to end their first round robin on a high note as FlyQuest trying to stay alone in first place. And Dignitas obviously wanting to keep pace. There's a lot of teams in the middle there at three wins. If they could get a win here, knock down FlyQuest to peg, they'd be right in the running. And we've got some some spicy matchups, uh, not necessarily for the top lane, but mid lane, I think, is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. um, whenever you go with this Syndra Maybe pick into the fallen. Tristana, it puts a lot of emphasis on the Syndra positioning, especially early on when you have to deal with possibilities of Flash W from Maokai, you know, you, the guaranteed route basically to allow Jensen to rocket jump on you, but also that level six kill potential with a Syndra as well as a Viego. Uh, so much damage there, so the 2v2 gets really spicy. And it's going to be really fun, you know, even just kind of as a throwback to that clip we saw from pros, you know, XE was saying, ah, well, we're going to ban out the, the Corky, the Syndra, the, or you know, sorry, yeah, the Corky, they banned the Oriana out the stuff, right? Like, banning out some of these more standard picks. Well, Jensen is not playing what he is known for. He is playing a different style here on the Tristana, and this is his 550th game here in the LCS. Pretty incredible. This man, you know, definitely one of the, the living legends of the league. Yeah, and he He's in a good position to kind of rate 
the skill and the variability of the Korean imports that we have had. So that little clip that we had where he thinks that this year's imports are not as good as previous ones. Uh, he definitely has the games to prove it, and we'll see if he can actually have the play to prove it. I mean, not only was Jensen talking trash on pros, he also had a quote in a Travis Gafford interview. I'm just happy to have a competitive roster again, and I feel like there's hope. And he was on Dig and Toss <laughs> yeah. last year. That's direct shade so at Dig. That is some absolute shade. So now he feels like he has the roster. He's in first place. Can he take down his old team here? Who's going to be hungry to disprove him? Certainly are, uh, especially XU. We highlighted him uh, being there live when Jensen was talking about it on the Pros podcast. And XU himself currently is just doing the normal full clear from top to bottom, ending towards the bottom side as Jensen trying to get control of the mid wave and pushing it right back. And XU is one of these these newer players coming up into the LCS, you know, trying to prove himself in a very difficult jungle cast. There are so many strong junglers in the league right now. You know, so even though XU is performing really well, you know, when you look at power rankings, it's tough to place him up near the top. It certainly is. And Inspired is one of those tough junglers. Uh, it's said almost every single time he's brought up, but winning MVP in both LEC and mm -hmm. LCS, definitely a impressive feat that he's been able to do. And him coming down to meet XU, he is behind a camp here, did not do his gromp. The most experience of any of the small camps is the Gromp. And he's going to head over there while XU with the pushing bottom lane should be able to secure that Scuttle Crab and quite possibly get the coveted double Scuttle Crab. Looks like he should be able to. Just going to be trying to cross over through mid. Do a little bit of a drive by gank here towards Jensen, who does have a nice buffer on the rocket jump and will be able to jump to safety as the scatter that we came through from dub. So XU moving up towards top, has pushing lane bot, has pushing lane top. Going to be able to get an easy double scuttle here. That's the advantage they have from those pushing lanes. But there is good scaling on the FlyQuest side. There's great engage. There's lots of playmaking. So you know, them being a little bit behind as far as the push early is not a big deal at all. All right. They counted the votes in chat. They think it's going to be an Ole Bard from Busio. Oh, okay. And honestly, after Busio yesterday, his Nautilus hitting every single hook. He was dialed in. <laughs> he was for sure dialed in. We'll see if the focus is kept up today on the Bard. Yeah, I mean, it, it's people talk a lot about, you know, oh, Nautilus hook is so wide, and it is, uh, but, you know, you have to know exactly where to aim it to abuse that, right? The lollipopping, where you're throwing it just the right amount to the side of a tower, and it can lollipop to the back instead of actually just connecting on the turret itself. As Bubble getting pretty low here, looking for a trade with that W, but he's very low on mana, and Rich trying to hold that wave as much as he can. Masu gonna get knocked up, though, and he is in trouble. He's gonna get locked down, and that is a surprising first blood there. Out of nowhere, Masu does not elect to flash the W from the Tom Kench, and he pays for it. Yeah, once you get that slow on you, it's going to be really scary and very difficult. You're going to basically have to flash to be able to dodge the Tom Kench W. He does not do it. It's kind of interesting, too, because a lot of people in this discussion of all the exciting rookies in the league right now, uh, with Masu included, really were hoping and, and wished that like XU and Isles, some of these players that have had some games, just enough to like disqualify them from uh, actual eligibility for being rookie of the year. Uh, feel like they should be in the conversation and there it is again. Yeah, the slow is on him, doesn't flash it, tries to just go with the ghost and Isles got him with the edge of the Abyssal Voyage. Nice flash there, reacting to the gank coming in as Jensen. A little bit of anti-timing, jumps in aggressive. You want to find those windows to rocket jump in these matchups on Tristana to go in aggressive, but XU was there. Ends up being that trade of flashes. Mid lane, though, going very even. And Masu back on the map here quicker with the white red. They're going to be able to chop down this dragon here pretty quick. So it is first blood over to dig, but FlyQuest get their dragon. Very interested to see if Dignitas will coordinate a repeat gank on Jensen now that he has no flash and Syndra is level six with that ulti we we're talking about. Mm -hmm. That definitely is the burst window, is the damage uh, that you need if you're going to actually make him eat his words. Yeah, and I, I think it'll be interesting, right? Because there's not that guaranteed lockdown. You can look for the scatter, but you can always buffer that rocket jump on it as Masu under a little bit of pressure here, but it's far enough back towards the tower, they should be fine. So, you know, it might even require, you know, an extra member coming there as Isles just using this dive pretty aggressively, jumping forward. Busio trying to wrap around, but Xu is here as well. So he's gonna have to portal to safety. Yeah, portal right back out. 
and they get the wave pushed in. Dragon was, of course, picked up already by FlyQuest, so even though Dignitas have this nice gold lead for themselves in the early stages, that FlyQuest team that you pointed out does have some scaling options for themselves will be pretty happy with the double call, with the dragon for themselves early on. Um, and Whippo is starting a decent amount of AP here with a Blasting one already. Um, they're going to have some diversification in their damage types. It's not just the double AD carries. Yeah, I'm going to be interested to see where he actually goes with this. Um, I've been seeing more and more people really liking the Leandries build it. Busio though in some trouble now. He's gonna get gobbled up by Isles, and that's another easy kill. Well, as Tomo gonna grab it. Dignitas is bot lane crushing here in the first seven minutes. And this Tomo Isles bottom lane was one at the beginning of the season where everyone was complimenting them for how much they grinded Champions Q, how many games they were putting in. They were both at the top of the ladder in Champs Q in the beginning of preseason, you know, where that was the only place you could play the new patch. They were just grinding away, really putting in that work, putting in that effort. And for them now to be the ones getting multiple kills on this FlyQuest bottom lane, who just yesterday were double killing Cloud9 over and over back to back plays. This seems like it, it really has been kind of true what the teams and the players have been alluding to where anyone really can and has a good chance at beating any of the other teams and the scrims have been all over the place. Exactly, you cannot look past any of these players and it feels like, I almost want to say, like casual deaths down that bot lane. Like it didn't feel like it was yeah. anything that surprising. You're just kind of underestimating the damage, maybe disrespecting the players, saying, ah, they're not going to kill me here. You know, not committing the flashes in either case. Both Masu and Busio die without flashing. Um, you know, maybe playing this game a little bit too cool, a little bit too. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I would say for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you can uh, hold on to that flash way too long. And uh, giving up those kills to Senna and to Tom Kent. Definitely can come to regret those. This gold lead continues to increase for Dignitas. Yep, we do have level six now for Busio, so playmaking tools unlocked for him as he could look for those ultis to try to set up plays. But of course, Senna TK is quite a safe lane. And Inspired's just been kind of relegated to power farming because his lanes have been getting pushed in. We can see Busio is moving around on the map, is over towards mid lane there, and potentially gonna head up towards top. We'll see if he can find an angle to get something done here as Whippo just constantly trading, and he's going to be going for the Roa build. This is another one I've been seeing more from Gragas Top. This is kind of an old school build as well. Back in the day, before Roa got removed, um, some Gragas's would go for those styles of builds. Dove, though, going to be forced to flash as Busio gets close with the Swifty Boots before using that Tempered Fate. And if you are really close like that and just throw it right on their target, they have to flash. They cannot get out of range. And it gets really dangerous for him now. Dove here on the center with no flash has no escapes, and Maokai ultimate is very difficult for him to get away from. XU is going to be a bit yeah, of a X, one. XU obviously starting to scrap there. And Busio will just be able to walk it out, but it does mean Inspire gonna have to drop the ulti. Jensen though potentially in some trouble, will have to retreat. The rocket jump is available and it's gonna be able to hop out to safety. Keep himself in not too much danger. I love this stuff from, from XU though. He's being so aggressive and he plays off of that winning bottom lane that's consistently getting these kills uh, to go invade the jungle and take away one of the points I was just trying to make of Maokai, you know, ultimate being threatening for the Cinder with no flash. Guess what? Because XU goes in there, he starts the duel and his, his bottom lane that's been winning is able to come up uh, and back him up in that invade, they get a very meaningful cooldown for it. Absolutely, I mean, it's just smart positioning, right? You know the Bard is gonna be walking back towards bot lane. He doesn't walk a safer route. So you lay in wait there. There's very little risk to what XU is doing. And he does end up forcing out some cooldowns. Now, Masu gonna pop the ghost here, looking for Isles. See if he can chase him down. The binding doesn't quite connect there from Busio, so they're gonna try to turn it on to Tomo, who's taking a lot of damage here, but a great ulti comes out from Isles, pulling Tomo to safety from that ulti that was popping out there from Masu. The dragon is now spawned. Jungler's moving back out on the map. And it is gonna be FlyQuest having to reset, which could potentially give Dignitas an opportunity to look for this dragon. And you can see the dove was cheating down towards it. Yeah, I wonder, with no Senna ult and no Tom Kench ult, a little bit of a reward here for Masu using his ghost, going super aggressive. After they get the reset too, heading on down, Inspired is going to arrive. I don't know, Masu's pretty far away, but they're poking around. Yeah, they're trying to get in range, see if there's any opportunity for a steal here, but it might be a one-way trip if they go for it. Jensen though, trying to get Pryo and Inspired's gonna pop the ult, he's gonna flash in, but it's Tom Kench of everyone who connects 
that last hit on it. XU, the binding not going to connect on him, and it will just dissipate. Yeah, that was really close. Uh, all the time here with Maokai and with Rel, you know, these champions that have one ability that does so much damage to jungle monsters. He tries to go with the Q flash in here and just time it with his smite. It got down to, I believe I saw 33 yeah, health. Yeah, really close. And so Tom Kench there, Isles, who was just... Uh, Autoing that dragon, um, or maybe it was even a tongue lash, is able to get it at the 33 HP. Oh, Whippo maybe in some trouble in top lane, though, as the world ender is going to get popped. We'll see if Whippo can find the disengage. He's in trouble here, but Jensen comes up. It's a flash out for Whippo. Jensen going to be able to go in. We'll see if the binding can land. Can he get it through the minion? No, he cannot. He was too far away. Whippo's still in trouble. Is the body slam back as Dove has come? The Grubs are angry. They are <laughs> aggroed, and Dignitas is going to take the leash. The story of Whippo and the Grubs this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> They're hunting him. It's been a long one. That one, uh, he, they let him out the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they let him off this time around. Not going to yeah. chase him around the map. And they'll just give their lives Sleep over to... with one eye open, Whippo. <laughs> yeah, they'll give their lives over to, to Dig this time. And remember, they got the first three as well. So, Exu able to pick five up already. number five already. And they're looking for number six. He already used his smite on one of the earlier ones, but nobody's coming around. So, it should be a full six. Yeah. The whole set here for Dignitas which will greatly improve their tower damage. They don't have a lot of split pushing. Uh, it's basically just the Aatrox that's going to be a lot more side laning. Syndra is one of the mid lane mages that's a lot more dangerous for them to go out in side lanes later on. So we'll see how much reward Rich can get with it. It can definitely help you even in those kind of siege situations, though, where you're both playing two, three members mid. You just keep spawning some void mites, chip away at that turret really slowly. And even punish people after you get a team fight victory. Sometimes totally. you can get a lot more that way. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And I mean, it can turn a lot of champions that aren't even good inside lanes you know, into a little bit of a tower threat. You know, if you leave Tom Kench alone, all of a sudden those void mites can really accelerate the damage you're going to get. You know, maybe you get a little bit more chip than you would have otherwise. Uh, but so far, relatively close game here. 1k gold lead before Ding Toss. The Grubs is their main advantage. XU, though, coming up towards top lane. Whippo may have to use the ulti for disengage, but Inspired is coming as well. There's the ulti out from Whippo. XU's gonna ult back in. Inspired here to peel. Not gonna be able to commit to this fight. Too healthy over on the Dictas side, but Inspired is there to cover. And that feels like that's been his role so far this game. He's not really able to look for the aggressive plays. He's just trying to bodyguard for the squad, keep them safe. Yeah, trying to do a little bit of denial. A lot of these moves have been started by Exu, and yeah. that's why it's always kind of a cover here for the Maokai. Of course, the champion is kind of good at those, those trailing plays where he's coming from jungle, has the long range ulti, but XU remains proactive here. And this is something that Dignitas themselves, when you talk to the coaching staff at the beginning of the year, they're very excited because last year, XU spent so much time watching Dig games with the coaching staff mm -hmm. in their room and discussing, uh, you know, the early game, especially strategy for the game. And uh, really has a very similar view to those coaches. And they felt like he was going to be one of the ones that would implement that in game on stage for them and definitely has paid off thus far in the early stages. FlyQuest, of course, battling a bit back and taking some of that, retaking some of that gold. Yep, absolutely. And I think they're going to be feeling pretty good about the fact that they're not too far behind because they do have a really strong 5v5 comp. They scale quite well here as well. And we're seeing kind of this new age tank build of just Bommy into Frozenheart and likely just Kanan coming up next for Inspired. That's kind of the big three. Is Dignitas potentially looking for a fight here? Busio may be in some trouble. He is kind of caught out of position here. Could get gobbled up. But on the other end, the TP is going to come in. Masu trying to work down this front line. But it's Busio who's going to go down. And now it's Whippo on the run. Can he get to the Blast Cone? Let's find out. He is going to be able to Blast Cone over the wall, but in comes Rich. And Rich has the World Ender active, and there's no way out for Whippo. 4-0 for Dignitas. And Isles is just stomping on them with this Tom Kench. You mentioned it. He gobbles up Busio. Bar can't even get away from him. He follows that magical journey, short as it is, right over the edge. And they're able to get the chase down. They retain control of Summoner's Rift. They even have Dove teleport to topside so they can push all three lanes afterwards. Yeah, Flyquest is not very organized on that play, you have to say. You know, coming in from different angles, didn't feel like they were all on the same page, but Busio maybe going to be spotting out X2 here. And kind of mentioned as well earlier that after winning one of those team fights, sometimes the Grubs will allow you to take even more. Them splitting out to the into the three lanes, getting those Grub and Might damage 
windows onto all three of the outer towers. Dub now rotating back towards mid so they can kind of finish up with this one. There's no way Masu wants to stick around. You've got no wave clear there. Oh, Bottom side though, Rich. Now Jensen going to be jumping in. Inspired is here. The Ignite is down and Rich is going to be going down in a hurry. They give it over to Jensen, injecting some gold in, but they have the Herald mid. They're going to get a charge. So that's two towers that are for sure going down. And we'll see how quickly FlyQuest can get back to defend this because it might be another charge coming in from the Herald. And look at all those void mice. Definitely going to get that next charge coming through. So half the HP off the inhib tower as well. And then they make the call. Keep Blippo topside, even though he doesn't have teleport. FlyQuest, they got the kill onto Rich. So even though Blippo is up there, whoa, teleport down to the bottom tower, whereas Jensen is almost going to finish it off. Yeah, it could be a fight here. Busio connects on Axiu, but will he have the damage to follow it up? The binding is there. Inspired is here, and in comes Masu. Axiu in trouble now, trying to get to the wall. Starbreaker over, and he does, but he goes down anyway. Another kill going to one of the AD carries on FlyQuest. As Busio now on the run, the Tongue Lash connects for Miles. Masu trying to escort him out as it's inspired hitting the dragon, but his team is fighting at the same time and no one is helping him. They got to turn on this fight. You can't be staying split like this, but it's Tomo in trouble now. Great gobble up there for Miles. It's going to keep him safe in the world. Ender is popped by Rich, but it's Jensen in the back line. It's Busio portaling out and Jensen's going <laughs> forward now. But look at the stun is going to be available there on Jensen. A great buster shot pushes Rich back and the world ender expires. The kill comes in onto Tomo and now Rich trying to get out of there will be able to limp out of this fight. But Inspired on the other side gets the dragon. What a scrappy performance there from FlyQuest. Many little outplays leading to a great result. All right, that was chaos. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the Tom Kench teleport to bottom lane where the tower was one hit away from dying from a Tristana right in like front that? of it, though. I, that, that's like a big, that. I, I feel like I need to review it. <laughs> we need to do like a live VOD review, slow this down, yeah. and, and maybe- You tasted top lane was cooking, you really like it. How does this yeah. TP taste, Kobe? This, this tastes like some expired milk. Oh, that's <laughs> terrible. Because look at this. It forces the rest of them to completely lose numbers up by the dragon. Then Xu just gets slammed into it and he's forced to try and escape ults over, he still dies. And in a scenario where Dignitas were, kind, were set up with a much better look, now they're at a numbers disadvantage with no jungler. And so when Masu moves up and he's putting all this damage into to Tomo, it, it forces this, this dig line to fold in on itself, allowing Jensen who was chasing the Aatrox to come over. And they had just enough damage with Whippo's ultimate getting him low enough for the explosive shot of Jensen to actually finish off the kill. Yeah, that that one is definitely a, a coordination issue yeah. on that on the uh, on the call there. You can see XU not not very happy with it. And a frustrating fight, I think, for Rich, you know, really getting kited out there as Busio may just go goodbye. Nice little sidestep on the initial play there, though. Rich coming forward. Jensen gonna have to flash out, but it's Isles in trouble in mid lane. The ulti comes through from Tomo, but it's not gonna be enough, I don't think, to keep him alive, or is it? As he's able to dive out and flash away does survive on both sides. No one loses anybody, but yeah, back to that previous fight. I mean, the buster shot on Rich as he was trying to E in onto Jensen. Also, as he goes to the Q flash onto Busio, he was able to portal to safety. You know, just narrowly missing those kills that would have been resets for the World Ender yeah. and could have really changed things. Yeah, Rich was so close to being able to try to snowball there, but now they're living in a game where they've completely lost their gold lead to FlyQuest and FlyQuest got the dragon on top of it. So they're the ones stacking now. And you're facing this double AD carry scaling composition where Jensen, who you mentioned in Champion Select, had put his time learning the Tristana in while he was on Dignitas, and now is using it against, against them. them. Oh, the deep water dive not quite in time to knock Masu up there. Would have been close. But he's at two items now with the quick, quick blades finished as well. So this Tristana damage gets pretty scary. Yeah, but Bo should be able to walk this one out. Xu is here. The body slam misses. Dove still holding that ulti, though. And there's a flash in from Xu with the stun. The Heartbreaker comes in. The heal from the passive, not enough to keep Whippo alive. As he's going to go down, Dignitas finding another kill there. Whippo felt confident they could have just walked that one out, but ends up punishing. Yeah, Xu again, still just so active here on the Viego. Creates another opening for Dignitas. Battling right back. This is mm -hmm. such a close, such a tight game here. And this is something I'll give Xu a lot of credit for. You know, even in the games that have not gone well for him, 
he has not shied away from making plays, right? He is determined to be continuing to play aggressive, you know, whether it's going well, whether it's not going well, he's gonna keep looking for those plays. And Dignitas is not a team this split that will go down without a fight. Even if they get behind, they'll keep looking for those aggressive moves. Yeah. A lot of fight left in them here, and they very shortly take a small gold lead. I mean, this thing, this bit is basically non-existent yeah. because gold leads are just a way to tell you who probably is going to have more items. And guess what? <laughs> the items are basically even items here. Items tell you that too. Yeah, items are going <laughs> to tell you that even better. I guess one of the interesting things is that Frozen Heart is so cheap mm. that you're seeing things where like Quippo has a completed 10 stack rod of ages in addition to his Frozen Heart. So they've got double Frozen Hearts for big AOE for the coverage um, you know, of that aura. And you get the extra level and the full scaling of the uh, rod of ages start for him. I will say also a little bit surprised by the Mikhail's rush here from Busio. I think that Mikhail's rush is really strong on this patch and in this season in general against a lot of champions, but I don't see a lot of those champions that I would think Mikhail's rush, you know, over on the other side. They're scatter of the week. You can Mikhail's, you can Mikhail's, you know, a center root, a Tom Kench stun on the Q if you get the stacks and then stun, but there's not really amazing things to Mikhail's. Yeah, so it's I, a bit surprising. I guess he's just so scared of the Syndra plus Viego bursting somebody and killing them. Like those two champions um, trying to save Masu's life most probably as he is the one that's going to have to be most worried about his positioning. Yeah, looking for the fight here. The ulti comes in, but it's a bit of a missed timing there as there's not going to be a follow-up binding Isles. Potentially can just walk this out, but there's the ulti from Inspire. Going to connect on to XU. XU though gets gobbled up by Isles and Isles is on the run. Now the TP coming in here from Bwimbo as he's going to join the team. The World Ender has already been popped by Rich, but it will expire now as FlyQuest, I think, have gotten themselves into a pretty decent spot here, but with Dove arriving as well, we'll see how they want to fight this one out. Axiom moving up. Busio trying to find an angle on the side here, but with no Bard ultimate, it could be tough. Yeah, look at Whippo then, because Whippo's ultimate is ready. He's got Flash ready on the Gragas. This is like dream playmaking opportunity, and they go top. Yeah, Jensen's going in onto Rich. Not going to be able to get the reset, but they do force the Flash. Inspired, though, trying to go forward, trying to get in range, as Masu's going to have to Flash out of there. There's the Heartbreaker from Axiom. Axiom trying to finish him off, but Masu is cutting out. Masu is still alive and on the other side it's Jensen taking over the fight and just on it going crazy showing who the better mid laner is in this one and it's Jensen with the triple it's Jensen with the quadra and it is FlyQuest marching on the Baron Jensen said the Korean imports are overrated and overused this split and he's 6-0 so I guess you can't say anything that quote tasted pretty good <laughs> tasted pretty good and FlyQuest, our number one team in the LCS, move right over to Baron. Clean ace for them. They kept Masu alive. Wow, amazing stuff here. I mean, e even a tiny bit of Mikhail there, that little bit of extra health in the end did make it for them. I thought Whippo as well, over the wall, after they pushed out Rich, and, and Rich already had no world ender from yeah. the earlier exchange. It, it felt like from the very beginning, FlyQuest got so many little advantages that then the execution of the end of the team fight was, was super easy for them. Here's a look at the start. Uh, and in this one, I'm looking at Jensen because the Trisana is doing a lot of damage and then he rocket jumps just out as Rich comes over and XU tries to stun him. So they get their chunk, they kite out the rest of the world ender here, they wait for the dragon, they reset it a little bit, and then they section off the fight where you have Whipple up on the top side, marking Rich, Jensen's gonna make another move on this Tristana to push him out. The rocket jump over the side, now he's got no flash or anything, and they basically re-enter the fight. Even though the blast cone puts Jensen further away for the start of it, he does come in so big. He kills Rich over the wall, basically. You mentioned Masu escaping on the side there. Actually, couldn't get through Busio. And, and that was basically all they needed to then finish up that ace, finish up that dragon and the Baron. Yep, they are committed for Masu. They can't finish him off and Jensen just goes crazy in the back. And there's a nice slow from the auto from Busio into the ulti. The binding though missed time, but he's gonna get eaten up there by Isles either way, so it won't matter. Masu though crushes Rich, who is way out of positioning here, and XU now on the run, but he's got nowhere to go. Whippo still chasing after him, the Scatter of the Week from Dove, buying a little bit of time, but it will only buy so much as he's trying to run to this Blasco, and he's trying to get away. Might actually be able to do it. I thought XU was gonna go to him for sure. Whippo still unwilling to let him go, chasing after him, slowly chopping through him. Does get the kill as Jensen's is knocking down the inhibitor tower on the top lane. That was a 4v5 that FlyQuest are winning. Jensen not even needed as FlyQuest are looking nigh on un unassailable at this point. All right, turret stand, no chance. 
Baron buff goes down. Tomo, Dove, and Isles, the resistance, trying to keep FlyQuest off. At least they're gonna keep their Nexus alive for now, but two inhibitors and the massive gold lead that has ballooned here off of the, the last five minutes for FlyQuest does seem like it will be inevitable here. Jensen, 6-0, he's got the fully stacked bounty. So from the point of view from Dignitas, at least you're still saying, hey, you know, dream scenario. Obviously, this is going to be super difficult to deal, but we got to do something about Jensen. Yep, yep. You got to stay proactive. You got to keep looking for those plays, but you touched on it earlier. Gold is only showing you, you know, what the item completions could be. And we can look at the item completions in both of the carry slots here. It's a full item advantage for Jensen, full item advantage, and more expensive items for Masu. So it's very problematic. You can see that the Koenig Rooker done now for Inspired. He has a Frozen Heart, you know, working towards another item. Three items going to be shortly finished up for Gwipo as he's working in towards that Spirit Visage. So very tough stuff here for Dignitas. Super's pushing in top, Super's coming in mid. It's gonna be up to them to try to problem solve, but really, you either have to hard engage right now or you have to go defend your Nexus and they're gonna take the third and hit. This is, this is a very difficult problem to solve and they're coming in. Yeah, they're gonna be looking for the engage now. Tomo does get caught by that Bard ulti. They're fighting on the turret, which might give them an opportunity. The deep water dive does connect on Masu, but it doesn't even matter. He ignores the Tom catch. He flashes in on the carries, and Masu and Jensen ripping through the team. It's another triple for Jensen. 9-0-2 on the Tristana. FlyQuest will end the first round robin. Will end Super Week in sole possession of first place. Fly Quest, new year, new squad. They've gone through so much, so many changes, bringing the, the young bottom lane together with the veterans. I mean, it has just been so fun to actually watch this team's development. You know, for me, I, I did have quite a bit of confidence in the bot lane, you know, but I wasn't sure how quickly would they be able to get up to speed in the LCS? You know, would this team be looking this good, this fast, with a pretty much rookie bot lane. And the fact that this game, it wasn't a start to finish, FlyQuest are dominating. Yeah. This was, whoa, what is happening bottom lane? They're giving up some of these like lazy looking kills yeah. uh, towards the bottom side. And even giving up those two kills to bottom side, they still did not panic at any point. They had faith in their scaling. You kept on mentioning Inspire's just farming away. He's trying to play counter here with the Maokai, trying to stop some of the plays that are going on to stop any sort of snowball. And they were able to bring themselves together in that team fight and absolutely demolish. You know, you work off some key cooldowns before it, set yourself up for success, and then take it home. And I gotta give so much credit to Jensen in this one. You know, 902 on the Tristana, did well in the lane, you know, survived any early pressure, navigated the team fights really, really well. It felt like he was always coming from these unusual angles in a lot of these skirmishes. You know, once so much had been committed into trying to kill Masu, Jensen would just hop into the back line with no threats remaining and just wipe the fight. Yeah. He was really playing it out smart. And you could see their, their front line as well, you know, inspired in Whippo with that double frozen heart, uh, creating so much space for them, lots of AOE uh, for them to work with. So despite it, Dig looking for those early moves and getting some of them to succeed, FlyQuest remain at the top. They do, and as we head to the break, let's take a look at our LCS Connected Comms replay presented by AT&T and voted on by you. Make kills for Syndra stun. Okay. Hey, drugs marking me. I can jump on him with you too, but yeah, yeah, I like it, I like it. Go, 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 go. Fighting Aatrox. Yeah, so okay. down here. Aatrox is one, Aatrox is one. I'm going over, I'm going over. Watch, over. watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. I got knocked away. I canceled. Syndra, no flash. I'm fine here, guys. I'm fine here, I'm fine here. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Yeah, me too. Syndra's dead. Same as that. Same as that. We're winning the fight, guys. Just live, just live, just live. It's Ace. Ace and Nash. I will reach him. Nice. Nice, guys. Good. I played quarter kill. Nice. Okay, Dude, nice. Wait, let, me let, me push. Push. let me heal up. Off I think I pushed both. Yeah. You guys get it, yeah? Uh, Wait, no, let me heal up. Just 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 okay. Red Bull gives you wings. You ready? No. I think so. Yeah, you know, just remember stay in your lane. Keep your vision up at all times. You know, time is going to be everything here. So you don't want to go too fast, but you also don't want to be going hey. up. I got this. Yeah. I think you do. And Mark, thanks. 
Whoa, hey, no, 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 whoa, no. You're not taking my car. My Kia EV9? No way. No touching. Welcome back. I'm joined with Jensen, the first place mid laner in the LCS after the first round robin. And uh, I know you talked a little bit of trash to Dove during pros, and you were also on Dignitas last That wasn't play. directed at him. Okay. Was there any extra meaning to this game because you were against the team you were on last year or because of what you said? I mean, normally I feel like I have to beat my old team because I'm like, I have to prove I'm better, but... It is Dignitas, so it's like, uh, you know, I didn't really feel too much there, to be honest. Uh, so you're feeling good. Yeah. Yeah, feeling confident. I want to ask you a bit about the Tristana pick, though, because you've been playing almost exclusively Oriana's ear. Yeah. And the Gragas Maokai Trist was locked in right away, so it was like Tristana blind pick. Yeah. Was there something specific that made you want to go with those picks today? I mean, I was... When I saw a seer was open, I was really thinking like, should I just lock a seer? But I was like, ah, I mean, it, it might get too boring if I play a seer Oriana every single game. So I was like, let's just play Tristana just today, you know? And then we went for it. Fair enough. And also, you have only had one loss as a team. You are in first place through the first half of the split. What has surprised you the most about this FlyQuest team with the amount of success that you found so early into the year? I think we just kind of gelled together really quickly as a team and we really figured out how we wanted to play together as a team really early on. I think normally teams struggle a lot with finding an identity, but I think we figured that out really fast even before we started playing on stage. So I would say we're just all on the same page and have the same way of playing in a way and uh, it's working out so far. And really quickly, even though it was a completely different FlyQuest team, last year's FlyQuest also was first placed after the first half of Spring Split. Has there been any energy or discussions about how to maintain this level and not get complacent with being in first? I mean, I don't think we really talked about it. I know uh, our coach was happy we lost that game because he thought we were getting too cocky. Um, but I think, you know, we're still focusing and staying humble and uh, focusing on improving as much as possible. But, you know, it's a completely different roster, so we don't think about it. Maybe the org thinks about it, but, um, yeah, we just focus on what we're doing and uh, try to keep winning. All right, thanks for the time, Jensen. Next up is going to be TL versus C9.